Throughout its history, AMD has had some great product launches, but none as hyped as the Ryzen 3000 series. After many rumors, leaks and speculation, Zen 2 is finally here. AMD sent me review samples of the Ryzen 7 3700X and the Ryzen 9 3900X. Also launching today are the Radeon 5700 and 5700 XT, so expect another video from me to review those as well. The Ryzen 7 3700X has 8 cores and 16 threads with a base clock frequency of 3.6 GHz and an opportunistic boost frequency of 4.4 GHz. What that means is that the frequency fluctuates depending on various factors like the VRM thermal limit, and in workloads that don't stress all cores, you will see higher frequency in a few of the cores. So rather than having a single core boost, you get a more flexible processor that adapts to the types of workloads that it needs to do. So as you start using more threads, the clock will gradually lower to reflect that, and we will look at overclocking later in the video. The 3900X has 12 cores and 24 threads, with a base frequency of 3.8 GHz and an opportunistic boost of 4.6 GHz. The Ryzen 3000 CPUs also come with double DL3 cache compared to last generation Zen and Zen Plus. As I've explained in past videos, the more data you can keep on chip, the less often it has to hop to system memory, and therefore the lower the latency will be, and less energy will be used in moving that data. What that means is that in older games, and also modern games that are very CPU heavy, you are going to see higher frame rates with the Ryzen 3000 CPUs compared to last generation, especially at lower resolutions. As you increase the resolution, the GPU will start to become the performance bottleneck. For this reason, the gaming benchmarks that you are about to see were performed at 1080p, precisely to eliminate that GPU bottleneck and show what what these CPUs can really do. AMD is using the term game cache because the idea here is that their new CPUs are offering extra gaming performance beyond just having higher frequency. And as you will see later, the fact that the 3700X has less of this game cache does seem to impact its performance in some scenarios. Now Intel has been saying that Cinebench R20 isn't really a good indicator of performance because it's a synthetic benchmark. So for our testing today, we're going to to start precisely with Cinebench R20. Starting with the multi-threaded bench at stock, the R9 3900X got a whopping 7,140 points, compared to Intel's Core i9 9900K's 5,305 points. The 3700X at stock got 4,617 points, while the Core i7 8700K got 3,540 points. Now you'll probably see other reviews which will have slightly different scores at stock frequencies, and that comes down to various factors like the cooling solution used, and more importantly, the RAM. In all these tests for cooling, I'm using the Kraken X62 all-in-one cooler, and I'm using this blinging G-Skill Trident C Royal RAM kit, which is running at 3600 MHz CL16. CL14 RAM would give you higher scores in Cinebench, so bear that in mind when you see other reviews. Looking at the single-threaded results, we see that the Core i9 is now slightly ahead of the 3900X at 500 5 points, while the 3700X did edge out the 8700K by 5 points. So as far as single-threaded performance is concerned, the AMD and Intel equivalent parts are, as of today, very much on par, at least judging by this benchmark that Intel wants you to disregard. Next up we have Adobe Premiere, and I should mention that the GPU in my test system is the GTX 1080 Ti, and that the motherboard that I'm using is the Asus X570 Cross Corsair 8 Hero. For this test, we're exporting a 7-minute project in H.264 at 24p in the 4K YouTube preset and CUDA accelerated by that 1080 Ti. So this gives you a very realistic export scenario. The 3900X took 359 seconds to export this project, beating the 9900K by 15 seconds. The 3700X exported the project in 446 seconds, being 4% faster than the 20 
6700X and beating its Intel equivalent by 7%. Now what about Intel's hardware encoding feature QuickSync? Using QuickSync during export takes the 9900K to the front of the pack, taking only 309 seconds to export the project. The thing is, QuickSync doesn't help you with timeline performance. QuickSync is just a final encoding acceleration, so this result doesn't give you a real idea of what the process of editing actually feels like, which is what you spend the majority of time on when you are working in Premiere. So if you look at the scrubbing with the 3900X here, for instance, along with the PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD that the clips are on, you can scrub through uncompressed 4K footage like it's nothing. The 3900X is seriously impressive at timeline performance. It's a game changer for video editors at this price. In addition to that, you have 24 PCIe Gen 4 lanes with the 3900X versus only 16 PCIe Gen 3 lanes with the 9900K. For a video editing workstation where you can have multiple GPUs and capture cards and NVMe drives, the 3900X is the far superior choice for video editing. So if you see reviews that show the 9900K beating the 3900X at quote-unquote video editing, remember that QuickSync doesn't tell the whole story. As someone who runs a YouTube channel, I can tell you I would take the 3900X any day over the 9900K for this particular workload. Photoshop is next and in the Puget benchmark the 9900K beats the 3900X by a very slight margin while the 3700X is ahead of the 9700K by an even smaller margin. So you can see a trend where in applications where single threaded performance matters most there's performance parity between AMD's and Intel's competing parts while in multi-threaded workloads AMD comes out ahead. However in After Effects a program that typically favors Intel CPUs. The Puget benchmark shows that the 3900X and 3700X do fall a bit behind the 9900K and 9700K respectively. There is a significant performance gain from these new Ryzen chips compared to the previous generation though. Now what could be more fitting for the Cortex channel than a neural network simulation using DigiCortex 1.35 to simulate the activity of neurons and synapses. We see both the 3700X and 3900X performing well with the 3700X taking the lead here, which is unsurprising considering how well its predecessor, the 2700X, already performed in this type of simulation. The Intel chips are significantly slower in this benchmark. Next up is Corona 1.3 with the 3900X rendering over 6.5 million rays per second, well ahead of the 9900K at 5 million rays per second. The 3700X sees a small increase over the 2700X and beats Intel's 9700K by a comfortable margin. Moving on to Blender and the slaughter continues with AMD's 3900X taking only 660 60 seconds to complete the open data test, being a whole 40% faster than the 9900K. The 3700X comes close to the 9900K and beats the 9700K by 26%. And in our last productivity benchmark, the WinRAR built-in benchmark, after a 3-run average, the 9900K and the 3900X are tied at the top with 28,000 kilobytes per second each, while the 3700X manages to beat the 9700K by a significant margin. So arguably, for most productivity tasks, the 3900X is the clear winner, depending on which programs you use the most, of course, with the exception being encoding videos in Premiere using QuickSync which is an Intel exclusive feature. We start our gaming tests with Civilization 6. Here we measure how long the game AI takes to complete a turn. The 3900X comes out on top with 6191 seconds, with the 3700X at 7 seconds. The Intel rivals are slightly behind in their CPU intensive gaming workload. In Fortnite, the 9900K still leads, achieving an average 207 frames per second at 1080p max settings, with the 3900X at 190 FPS average. The 8700K and 3700X are basically tied, which considering that the 3700X costs less is somewhat of a win here. With all of these CPUs, the gameplay was fluid with no micro stuttering, so you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between them at 1080p. Moving to another Battle Royale game, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds shows very similar performance between all four CPUs, with the 3900X coming out on top by a very slight margin. However, 
However, I did notice occasional micro stuttering with the 3700X, so checking its 0.1% lows showed that it dropped down to as low as 17 frames per second regularly. This was repeatable, so there seems to be some anomaly with the 3700X which I'll have to investigate further in the coming weeks. All the other CPUs offered fluid gameplay without any stutters. And for the last game benchmark, I thought I'd try something a bit different. AMD has been showing off World War Z in some of their presentations, so I decided to include it. But as a twist, I ran it in Vulkan. Now the Vulkan implementation in this game is an absolute stutter fest, and the benchmark shows it clearly. Still, the 3900X did come out on top and with a significant lead at 217 frames per second, while the 3700X got 200 110 frames per second. The Intel CPUs were about 20 to 25 FPS lower. So overall in gaming, the Intel and AMD competing CPUs perform very similarly, with Civ 6 potentially showing that more CPU intensive gaming workloads favor the new Ryzen CPUs over the Intel counterparts. There will be more gaming benchmarks over at Cortex.tech, so be sure to check that if you're interested in these CPUs for gaming. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to push the chips too much as far as overclocking goes, as both of the X570 boards I was sampled with had issues. The Mac Godlike had a USB over current protection issue, which prevented the chips from booting, and the Asus Crosshair Hero 8 had a BIOS bug that killed chips if you looked at it the wrong way. These are just pre production issues, mind you, and the retail motherboards will be working just fine, so I'll have to wait a bit to do more extensive overclocking tests. Having said that, with the 3900X, I did manage to get a stable all-core boost of 4.2 GHz at 1.35 volts, never going beyond 41 degrees Celsius under full load. This resulted in a Cinebench R20 score of 7,497 points, which is pretty crazy. So you can expect around a 5% or more increase in performance from a similar overclock, at least in rendering. But bear in mind that I am using a pretty high-end all-in-one liquid cooler here. In gaming, the Civ 6 Gathering Storm AI benchmark went from 32.84 seconds per turn to 33.31 seconds per turn. In PUBG, there was a pretty significant increase to 147 frames per second average after several runs, and the frame times remained consistent with no micro stuttering. Overall, the 3900X does benefit significantly from this modest overclock. I couldn't push it beyond 4.2 GHz all cores, but that might just have been my sample. The 3700X was pretty similar as far as overclocking goes. For a fully stable system, I could only push the chip to 4.2 GHz on all cores at 1.35 volts, with the CPU temperatures topping out at 43 degrees Celsius with an ambient temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. That resulted in a Cinebench R20 score of 4,984 points. In the Civ 6 Gathering Storm AI benchmark, however, this overclock took the stock score of 30. 3.83 seconds per turn to 35.47 seconds per turn, so there was a regression in this particular gaming workload, which is odd. PUBG did see a small increase to 140 FPS average after a few runs, but that's just 2 FPS more though, so unlike with the 3900X, the overclock in the 3700X didn't seem to affect gaming performance that much, and also the overclock didn't seem to fix the micro stuttering issues on the 3700X in PUBG. As a side note, I did try and run the new Ryzen chips on an older B450 motherboard, the MSI Gaming Plus AC, but the BIOS that I found for it that would support the new Ryzen chips didn't seem to get them going, so unfortunately I'll have to test the chips in older motherboards at a later point. Looking at the temperatures, on the load using the Kraken X62, the 3900X maxed out at 45 degrees Celsius and the 3700X maxed out at 43 degrees Celsius on the full load, and that was with the overclock supplied. Both of these CPUs come included with AMD's premium Wraith Prism LED cooler, which will do an adequate job of keeping the CPUs running cool, and they look pretty also. You will be able to get the same overclocks that I did using the included coolers, but your temperature will be much higher, probably around the 70 degrees Celsius depending on your ambient temperature. 
In Windows 10, deferred procedure calls are scheduled sequentially, so I wanted to check what the latency was between different generations of Ryzen CPUs. The first gen Ryzen 5 1400 maxed up at 1524 microseconds. The 3900X follows at 1468 microseconds. The 3700X at 1463 microseconds. And the 2600X seems to have the lowest TCP latency at 1100. 43 microseconds. Now things get really interesting when the chips get overclocked. The 3900X with the all core overclock of 4.2 GHz drops the DPC latency down to just 1229 microseconds. The 3700X on the other hand gets an even higher latency when overclocked, maxing out at 1828 microseconds. With the 3700X at such high latency and with less L2 and L3 cache available than the 3900X. Could this be the reason behind the micro stutters we saw in PUBG? I honestly don't know at this point, but it's a good place to begin investigating, so be sure to subscribe to the forums over at cortex.tech as I dig deeper into this behavior in the coming weeks. For now, all I can say is that for the fastest responsiveness in competitive gaming, the 3900X overclock seems like a good choice, while the 3700X might struggle in this regard, as we saw with PUBG. So is the 3900X worth it? If you are doing workstation type work, like 3D modeling and especially rendering, then absolutely. At $500 you are essentially getting a 12 core workstation class CPU, but one that also has gaming performance leadership and really low latency when you overclock it. In that sense, the 3900X is in a class of its own. For video editing, pairing the 3900X with a PCIe Gen 4 M.2 drive will give you absolutely amazing timeline performance in Adobe Premiere. If like me you have a love-hate relationship with Premiere, then the 3900X will alleviate many of the issues with the industry's standard video editing software, particularly the timeline lagginess. If you are mostly just gaming, but you plan on streaming, those extra cores will allow you to game, capture gameplay, and stream all at once in the same machine without losing gaming performance, provided you take the time to find the right balance between all three. The 3900X is the new king of the consumer grade CPUs and I highly recommend it. As for the 3700X, even at stock, this is a far superior product than its competitor, the 9700K, and it costs less. It crushes the 8700K and 9700K in productivity workloads and is about on par as far as gaming is concerned. My only reservation is the micro stuttering I already mentioned several times, but this is something I will be looking more into. If you are considering a 9700K for a gaming build, my advice would be to pair the 3700X with a B450 motherboard instead and use the money you save with the AMD platform to get a better GPU, as that will almost always be the component that affects your gaming performance the most. Or even better, use the money you save with the 3700X and get a better monitor. These two Ryzen processors not only live up to the hype from the last few months, but they also set a new standard for desktop PC use. Welcome to the age of multi-core processors with no drawbacks in single-threaded performance. And be sure to check the video description for pricing and availability of these CPUs, as well as for the full testing methodology. There will be more benchmarks over at Cortex.tech and before I go, a big thank you to Gavin from Anantech for helping me with some of the motherboard issues I had and big thanks to Steve from Hardware Unboxed for helping me consolidate the Intel CPU data and thanks also to the various Cortex patrons who contributed with hardware and who shared their own testing results on previous gen Ryzen and current gen Intel CPUs. By the way, all of my patrons get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server Server, so be sure to join them in supporting my channel for just $1 per month. Thanks for watching and until the next one.